Warning, may cause inflammation, asthma, OCD, Alzheimer's, depression, diabetes, Parkinson's, ALS, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoporosis, bipolar disorder, inflammatory bowel disease, autoimmune diseases, heart disease, cancer, and septic shock. Tumornicosis factor alpha. Tumor necrosis factor alpha is a cytokine or cell signaling protein responsible for regulating inflammatory and immune responses in cell death. TNF alpha comes in two forms a membrane integrated form and a soluble form that forms homotrimers in solution. Each TNF-alpha monomer is composed of two anti-parallel beta-pleated sheets. Each monomer core is composed of two sheets, an inner sheet and an outer sheet, of four beta strands each. The inner sheet strands of A, H, C, and F in the diagram aid in connecting the monomers of the trimers, while the opposite sheets form the outside of the trimer. The interior of each monomer is packed with residue side chains, most of them belonging to hydrophobic amino acids. It is interesting to note, however, that the primary sequence in the A, H, C, and F strands of the inner sheet and edge doesn't alternate between hydrophobic and hydrophilic amino acids as is typically seen in amphipathic beta barrels. The presence of structures with three or more hydrophobic residues in the beta strands means alternate residues participate in the beta core and hydrophobic trimer interface. Near the base of each monomer, the N and C terminal residues are in close contact and form a shallow depression surrounded by polar residues, small hydrophobic side chains, and extensions from beta strands or polypeptide loops that connect the beta strands. The side chain of tyrosine 56 projects into the cavity. The hydroxyl group at the interior surface of the depression is below the rim formed by the polypeptide connecting loops and may play a role in receptor binding on the base of the trimer near the NNC termini. With each TNF-alpha protein, however, you don't just get one monomer, but three. In solution, three monomers associate about a three-fold axis of symmetry, forming a compact bell-shaped homotrimer. The C-terminal edge of each monomer abuts the interface of its adjacent monomer in the trimer to make this happen. An intermonomer salt bridge also forms between lysine 98 and glutamine 116 residues to help them bind together. The formation of the trimer results in an open polar channel lined by carbonyl oxygen and amide groups. Tyrosine side chains may allow the exterior surface of the inner sheet to interact with aqueous solutions to keep the trimer from dissociating. But wait, there's more! TNF-alpha doesn't just cause mass destruction and restoration by itself. TNF-alpha can bind two receptors, TNFR1 and TNFR2, to cause either pro-inflammatory cascades and apoptosis or cell survival, proliferation, and immune system regulation. It really can do it all. TNFR1 is found in most tissues, while TNFR2 is mainly located on immune cells and only responds to the membrane-bound form of TNF-alpha. As seen here with TNF-alpha and TNFR2, these receptors interact with TNF-alpha by binding in the lateral grooves between the monomers and the trimer at the trimer's base. When the receptors make contact with TNF-alpha, they undergo a conformational change that causes them to set off downstream signaling pathways. So how can you make TNF-alpha work for you? Well, you can't. Based on your genetics, the tissue type, the cellular environment, the receptors present, pathway protein concentrations, and the presence of invading pathogens, reactive oxygen species, and much more, TNF-alpha can be the best or worst thing that ever happened to you. Part of the balance between mass destruction and restoration of the body during immune responses has to do with the interplay between TNF-alpha and NF-kappa B, a protein that transcriptionally activates inflammatory genes in response to cytokines, like TNF, and induces anti-apoptotic factors to counter TNF-R1's triggering of apoptotic machinery. But back to the receptor's roles. When TNF-R1 binds TNF-alpha, the inhibitory protein SODD dissociates, allowing TRAD to bind and recruit proteins like TRAF2 and serine threonine kinase RIP. TRAD can also bind FAD, which recruits protease caspase 8 and 10 for apoptosis. Once caspase 8 is induced, cytochrome C is released from the mitochondria, where it is used in the electron transport chain, and a caspase 3 inducing apoptosome complex is formed. After TRAD binds TRAF, TRAF2 recruits the IKK complex into TNFR1, where RIP activates the kinases in the IKK complex. A proteasome degrades the IKK complex to liberate NF-kappa B, which is phosphorylated and travels to the nucleus to regulate transcription of proteins involved in cell survival, proliferation, the inflammatory response, and anti-apoptotic factors. While it would seem that TNF then is defeating its own apoptotic capabilities, the power actually lies with TRAF2. TNFR2 competes with TNFR1 for TRAF and the anti-apoptotic proteins that work to degrade TRAF2 and increase competition for it. If anti-apoptotic proteins in TRAF2 are in TNFR1, they decrease apoptosis. 
but if they localize to TNFR2, they cause apoptosis, as they cannot help inhibit apoptotic pathways by acting with TNFR1. If TNF is really serious about causing cell death though, it can do so by directly triggering oxidative stress and mitochondrial dependent production of reactive oxygen species. When DNA is damaged from these factors, PARP1 is activated, which consumes NAD+, halting the citric acid cycle and depleting ATP. Since apoptosis takes ATP, necrosis occurs instead. So what more generally can TNF-alpha do for and to you? After it's produced by macrophages and other immune cells, activated by lipopolysaccharides, bacterial products, viruses, parasites, other cytokines, and more, TNF-alpha can mediate innate immunity, inhibit triglycerol metabolism, promote the serine phosphorylation of insulin receptors to impair its signaling and cause insulin resistance, inhibit tumor agenesis and viral replication, and cause tumor necrosis? Wait, tumor necrosis? Does this mean cancer is cured? Not so fast. TNF-mediated tumor reduction in vivo depends on a functional immune response and is independent of TNF-alpha's ability to induce direct apoptosis in target cells. Just injecting TNF-alpha into the body also has several side effects, ranging from influenza symptoms to shock because it is involved in so many inflammatory, immune, and other functions. Unless systemic responses to TNF can be controlled and TNF can be applied just to tumor cells, it will never just lead to tumor necrosis. In fact, if TNF gets out of hand, it can cause diseases on its own. Its overpromotion of the inflammatory response can lead to autoimmune diseases. So what do you do if this pesky little cytokine gets out of hand? Well, just like TNF in excess can cause side effects because of its involvement in so many pathways, total inhibition of TNF can cause side effects too. A selective TNF-R1 inhibitor must be used to target pathogenic TNF signaling in autoimmune diseases so that the immunomodulatory and tissue homeostatic functions of the TNF and TNF-R2 contractions can remain. Two new inhibition strategies have also been developed. A LAMA-derived antibody that only contains heavy chains, VHH, was made that would keep TNF from binding to TNFRs, inhibiting the necrosis effect of TNFR1. Unlike antibodies, two VHHs can be coupled via linkers so they can bind and block two of the three receptor binding sites in TNF-alpha instead of one. A second inhibitor is a small molecule that binds to the TNF-alpha trimer and destabilizes it, displacing one monomer to form a dimer and inhibiting receptor binding. The molecule binds the TNF dimer using 16 contact residues, including six tyrosine residues, one of which is tyrosine 119 that is located close to the three-fold symmetry axis of the trimer. Since the tyrosine side chain must rotate to accommodate the compound binding, the interactions between the monomers are destabilized and dimer is formed. There's a reason TNF alpha is alpha, so keep your lifetime supply today. But if you aren't 100% satisfied, we can try to inhibit it for you, no guarantee. Whether you want cell death or tissue healing, TNF-alpha can meet all your bodily needs. So go ahead, ask your body if TNF-alpha is right for you.